Hey, welcome back to Bridal Sewing Techniques, and today we're going to talk about how to take in an angled seam, hey, without puckers. Are you someone who has experience with a mix of sewing, but is looking to get into the bridal sewing niche? This channel is for you. Hit subscribe to become a part of the community. The bonus that I have planned for you in today's video is also going to go over how to avoid puckers in just a traditional straight seam as well. Well, let's get back to today's scenario. Today, a bride walks into your studio and she has this beautiful dress and uh-oh, the hips are too big and you need to take this dress in at the hips and look at that seam. It's so different. What are you going to do to work around that angle? First, let's just sit down with a razor and peel the lace away so that we can reveal the seams where we need to work. So here's the lace peeled back where you can see how beautiful this intersection is of seams. With that beauty comes a little bit of complication because if you take it up the traditional way, you're going to get some bunching there at her hip. First picture a traditional straight seam at the waist. And if you pulled up on that seam allowance, how it would cause that nice, neat, straight seam to bunch up and pucker. Well, the same thing is going to happen here where this meets at the thigh. Here's the side view of a skirt with puckers at the angled seam. This is what we're going to avoid by sewing it correctly. I want you to recognize these puckers so that you know when you see them how to fix the problem. So if you're first starting out, you might think, why is she spending so much time talking about these puckers and showing diagrams of where they occur? But as alterationists, we read all of the puckers and the pulls and the bunches, and all of them tell us where to work and how to correct the problem. So it's very important that you learn to recognize the problem on the outside so that you can fix it on the inside. So here I am separating this whole intersection. Um, we have that nude colored um, mesh there that is, or it's like a netting. It's a little bit stronger than a tool. Um, they call this second skin is the name of this. It's a, or illusion. It's a super popular style now, um, but we're going to pull that away. And then we also are dealing with the shell layer. That's the outermost layer that you see the most fabric of on the outside. And then we have our lining layer. And then of course we've already pulled away our lace. Now I want you to notice the angles of the way this fabric is cut. This is super important. I want you to take this in, visualize it, go ahead and burn this in your brain so that you can picture it the whole time that I'm working. It's going to be very important that you hold on to this imagery as I work so that you can understand where I'm working and how. Please notice how the seam allowance is angled. It's not straight. That's going to be super important. You have to maintain it throughout the project. So this mesh layer, as you take it in, the seam allowance is going to get longer and longer and angle down. And then on the skirt layer, as you take it in, um, it's going to point further and further down and get shorter. So let's maintain that as we work. First, I'm going to go ahead and take up that second skin layer. Um, basically, her hips are just a little more narrow, so I'm going to start bringing them in. This is just the taper, and this is going to meet up with where the skirt is. I'm only taking it up, I think, about a half an inch at that intersection now. So now I'm going to splay open this illusion layer, and then the next step is I'm going to take in the hip, um, starting with the same exact um, amount of taking it in as I ended that illusion layer. So if I ended um, at taking it in a half an inch, I need to start my hip at a half an inch 
and then go on with the shape of the bride. It's pretty much going to be about a half an inch all the way down to um, where the skirt starts to flare out. It'll, it'll noticeably change down there, and that's where I'm going to do my taper, and that's pretty normal. Wherever... Um, wherever the skirt starts to come back out, if it's like a trumpet or a mermaid or whatever, you're going to want to taper right into that spot, usually. Now, if you get a bride that's very petite, um, you might need to change where the, where the gown starts to um, kind of come out there at the bottom. Now, where have I been, guys? Have you noticed, instead of uploading once a week, um, lately I've been doing every other week. Well, what's going on was last year I had a lot more videos that were four minutes long, seven minutes long, quick tips, things like that. Um, and they really helped with my um, library of videos here. And I feel like that we had some necessary things that we accomplished in there. So I'm glad we did it. But it seems like this the, these longer videos that I'm doing um, where I don't edit out quite so much of the alteration project um, and where I just kind of go ahead and not speed it up but teach during the downtimes. These videos, um, this format seems to be helping you guys a lot more. I've noticed my watch time has gone up. My comments have gone up. I've been getting a lot more interaction, questions and things like that in the comments down below and also emails with questions. Guys, keep them coming. I want to help any way I can and I also love your ideas too. So go ahead and share your ideas down below. Um, but yes, since I'm doing these longer videos, obviously they take a lot longer to produce. So. Um, it, when I am uploading the longer videos, they're going to have to be uploaded more like every other week instead of once a week. Um, who knows, someday um, maybe I'll get super good at the video production. Oh wait, I'm going to stop. Look, you can clearly see it in that shoot, uh, in, that, in that right there, how the skirt was blousing out and how I tapered into it. Um, I hope you know what I'm talking about. I try to say it all different ways, how it kicks out at the bottom or the flare. Um, I don't want to get too terminology intense. I want to use a lot of different ways of describing everything so that if you're learning, I don't want to be throwing out terminology you don't know. I want you to understand. So if you ever have any questions and I happen to do that, go ahead and Throw your question down there in the comments and I'll be happy to try to explain myself a little better. So here I am opening up the seam allowance. With this alteration, part of it not puckering is very important that we open all the old seam allowances, uh, open the old seam, get rid of it, and splay them open. Now what you're going to see me do is um, I'm going to have to cut where this illusion um, is, it's going to have the seam allowance of the illusion against her skin and the bodice, and then where it meets the skirt, the seam allowance has to go uh, in between the skirt and the lining, the shell and the lining layers. So I have to snip it all the way to the seam so that it can have that separation without puckering. That step was very important, so if you need to rewind and go back and see it, you can. That's the beauty of learning by video, isn't it? All right, so what I'm doing is I'm getting all these layers stacked together flush. Now, let's take a break and look at these sketches. They're going to really help you visualize this alteration, and it's also going to contain that little micro bonus lesson that I told you that um, this tutorial was going to include. So remember the part about uh, when we take up an angled seam or when we take in an angled seam, the seam allowance gets shorter. I want you to remember that. We cannot sew that seam allowance to 
this angled seam like we would a level waist seam or it will pull up and pucker. Can you picture that? See, I drew some, uh, I sketched some little puckers in there. We cannot do that. Um, so it's gonna be important that we know how to splay the seam open without sewing it to the waist seam. Now remember your illusion layers, as you take it in, the seam allowance is going to get longer. The satin layer, as you take it in, the seam allowance is going to get shorter. So let's learn first from a level waist on a gown. Um, let's picture one with a pucker and figure out what's going on. Well, sometimes, you know how we like to sew those, like I was saying, the seam allowance is straight. Um, sometimes you can still get a pucker with it if you have taken up the dress quite a bit. One time I had a bride bring me a dress um, that another uh, seamster had been working on and they could not get the puckers out and that's all it was um, was they were sewing the entire seam allowance and they had already taken up the dress significantly um, sometimes you can't do that it, it will pull up a little bit so um, be careful of that when you take up a gown a lot so when I take up a gown a significant amount sometimes I must put like a little tuck in my seam allowance if the fabric is not very thick um, and that's going to keep it splayed um, but without you know jerking the fabric up anywhere now quite a few times I have worked behind another seamster and I've seen where they have trimmed away the seam allowance um, now this does give you a very low profile seam um, and this is probably fine if you are 100% sure the dress is never going to have to be let out and the bride has given you permission to do that. But it's not always necessary and sometimes seamsters just do that just to save time and to prevent the risk of having a pucker. I personally um, try not to do that because it's pretty irreversible. Now this is actually my favorite way of handling it when I have quite a bit of seam allowance to deal with or when I'm working with the angled seam and I can't include the seam allowance in that waist seam or, or whatever the horizontal seam is that's going on. What I'll do is I will sew, um, let's say I'm sewing from the front along the waist seam to the side seam, okay? If I'm sewing like that, I will sew uh, without catching the seam allowances I will sew all the way up to that vertical side seam and stop and then I will pick back up at the back and sew back toward the vertical side seam and stop there and not pick up the seam allowance and then I go back and just do a little tack of three or four stitches that keep it splayed open now again this is not for um, a lot of fabric when the seam allowance really does need to be um, cut out or sometimes if we have to splay open a lot of fabric you'll see that I will um, tack it apart so that it can't be flip flopping inside um, and causing weird shadows and lumps and lines and things like that all right so there was your mini lesson on how to avoid a pucker and let's get back to our project with the angled seam. And I'm doing the last technique that I described. I'm sewing from the waist toward that vertical side seam. And then I'm picking back up and I'm getting it from the back sewing toward that vertical side seam. I'm trying to use horizontal and vertical. It's hard to do that when we got all these angles, right? Now I have flipped the seam allowances, all of them out of the way, and I'm gonna sew from that vertical side seam back toward the back. Didn't take much. I'm sewing it back together, and now I'm splaying open these seam allowances, and you can see they're completely independent from that angled seam where the illusion is meeting the skirt. Now, oh my goodness. <laughs> what am I doing yeah I'm cutting out <laughs> I'm cutting out some of that illusion it's just dangling in there guys uh, if she did have to let this out 
at that point it had already been slit remember um, to to go inside between the layers that would have had to have been patched over with lace anyways um, so to neaten it up I did go ahead and trim that um, and um, I would definitely explain that to the bride and have her permission first again I never cut away anything without permission unnecessarily so what I'm doing here is I've got a nice strong size one uh, needle here nice long strong needle and a Tex 40 thread and I am splaying open these seam allowances and I am very loosely tacking them to that angled seam so that they have to stay open and of course um, at the end of this alteration I will definitely off camera be taking this dress over to the ironing table and I will iron them open and that's going to help as well um, but what I'm doing is a nice loopy long tack that's going to give this fabric what it needs the laxity that it needs um, picture being on a horse if some of you have ever uh, rode a horse before you got to give it plenty of reins if it's going to jump or stretch out its neck and work that's what we're doing with the seam allowance we're making sure it stays open but we're not letting it get jerked up um, by that angled seam so i'm going to go around and I'm going to do this four times just to keep it open and neat. Now let's turn this dress right side out and lay the lace out. Make sure everything is going to lay well. Check all of our intersections of our seams and make sure everything is trued up and neat. I hope you guys like my new lighting that I used in this video. It's a high contrast lighting and I think it makes things pretty clear. I'm actually not sewing in the dark. It's actually quite light in there. It's just the way we have the lighting set up. Unfortunately, the lighting does make my hands look kind of old. <laughs> I think my hands look like 20 years older under this lighting, but hey, we need the contrast. Um, so anyways, now that you've finished this, what you would do is you would press it. You take it to the ironing table, press it, and then you would have to hand sew all this lace down. Now, I do have videos um, about lots of the details that were pictured in this video. We have how to use a razor instead of a seam ripper, if that's what you would like to start learning how to do. We also have a video on sewing the lace over layback. Um, it's really not hard. It, it's a little time consuming, um, but there are some tricks um, to keep your eyes fresh um, and to make it a little bit easier and faster to hand sew that. Now, when somebody comes in your studio with a dress like this with an angled seam and you got to work around that seam, hey, you don't need to be scared of that dress. You can do an amazing job on this alteration. I know you can. Please leave a comment down below. Don't forget to hit like. It helps so much. And hit subscribe and hit the bell and tell your friends. Thank you for watching. I know what you're looking for. You've been sewing for years, but you want to get into full-time bridal sewing. But there's something missing. You're missing the backroom secrets, the industry tips and tricks. The tools, the sources, the techniques that give you the speed and the accuracy that the industry demands. You have found it.